Praise God. Good morning to you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am so thankful to be a part of your day, and thank you so much for letting us give you what we know to be the Word of God. Thank you. This is a wonderful opportunity we get to have, and I want you to know that I cherish it and I love it because this is what I was born to do. And just so happened, today is going to be a message that is entitled, He Knows My Name. God knows you. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows your DNA. He knows everything there is about you because he made you. He formed you, and he created you and brought you forth. And I thank God for that. Amen. He built you with all of the storms that would come through your life. He built that into you. He knew what you were going to encounter. So he built you for the storms that's in your life. He built you for everything that would ever encounter you. He knew that you could make it. And it's an indication that you making it because today you're looking at this program. You made it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put that in the feed. Thank you, Lord. I made it. This is a wonderful opportunity we get to have. So like and share this uh, program. We are a listener-supported broadcast ministry, and I want to thank all of our partners, all of those who support us, and bless us every week with being able to come back and be a part of every individual's life who will listen. If you're listening at a rebroadcast of this, just know this, that you are important to God. So much so that he loves you. He will never abandon you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He loves you, and we do too. God bless you. Now, always know this, that whenever you like, please share it, but also subscribe, which means click that button that says you follow. And if you follow, you'll get an indication to when we're coming on at any given time. So just know this, that we appreciate you and thank you for everything that you do for this ministry. If that is just to pray, you're praying us through. If it is to support us with prayer and finances, that is wonderful. And whatever the Lord has called you to do for this ministry, please do that. And we love you for whatever your efforts are. Thank you so much for doing what God has called you to do. All right, let's get our Bibles out, and we're going to go into the Word of God, and we're going to do something, um, and I want to just share with you how important it is to know the name, amen, that God calls you by. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, God, that you have uh, called us by name, and Father, that you have given to us the ability to know who you are by name. And you said that you are I am. And so we know that what we need is on the other side of am. So, Father, you are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my savior. You are my peace. You are my love. You are my everything. You are just awesome all by yourself. But, Lord, thank you for including us into your plan for this world and, Father, for all the things that you will be doing in this earth in this last and evil day. I pray, God, that you would strengthen us and make us aware of your presence that's living inside of us, that we might do what we have been brought forth to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, let's get our Bibles out. We're going to go to Isaiah, and we're going to look at the 43rd chapter, verses 1 and 2 from the NIV version. Amen. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2 from the NIV. And it reads like this. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now, when I think of this, I think about everything in creation has a name. And whenever a name is given or assigned to an individual or things, it gives relationship to that whom it is mentioned by. So if, just say for instance, if a cat comes by your house every day and it's a stray cat, and see, there's a name. We've already named it a stray cat. But whenever you come and you feed that cat and then you start developing a relationship with that cat by feeding it, then somebody will ask you, well, whose cat is that? You'll say, um, I don't know, but I guess it's mine because I feed it every day. And that means you have a relationship with that cat. Okay, just say, for instance, right now, you've had a newborn child. Okay, because you have a relationship with that child, and because you're uh, related to that child, you name that child. So everything in creation has a name. It means that it's, it's related to the environment. It's related to an individual. It's related to everything that makes the cosmos go. And so whenever you start naming things or whenever God starts naming things through Adam, God gave Adam the names and Adam said what God spoke to his heart to say. So everything that is named, God says that you have dominion and authority over. You are the head of it. You are the creation of it. And because you're the creation of it, you need to understand that you're never bigger than the creator, but you're over the creation. God makes man head of the creation. So man names everything. He has relationship with everything. And because he has relationship with everything, he then now has to understand that God made him. And because God made us, we have to understand that we can never be bigger than God. God is always above us in name and everything else. I remember reading in the scripture where it says that, that there is no opposite equal to God. There is none beside him. Uh, no one can, can stand up to him. Our arms are too short to box with him. We can never know the height, the width, and the depth, and the length of God. We can only know it in part. And now when that which is perfect will come, he's going to uh, give us all full knowledge of God, and therefore we will know him in totality. But the names that God gives us will not even be expressed in his fullness until we get to heaven. The Bible says that there will be a stone given to us, and that stone will bear our name, and only us and God will know the names when we get to heaven that he will call us. Now, so um, this is very important uh, whenever we understand that we are called by our name, and I'm glad that God knows my name. So what this means is, is that God creates an atmosphere for me to live in, and he constantly keeps my name in his forethought or in his mind. And as he speaks me into existence, he then speaks in reverb, and it goes continually on. It's like once you hear something, uh, let me give you an example. When he said, let there be light, the, the word let there be light is still reverbing in the galaxies of nothing. And it's still creating uh, moons and stars and, and, and planets and all of these things because it's still reverbing. And so faith come by hearing. It's a continuation. You never stop hearing creation. So God, when he made you, he made you a continuation of what he was thinking. So he watches the end of your life from the beginning. He knows that he watches over his word to perform it. So everything there is that you will be, he's already done it. He's already done for you healing. He's already done for you deliverance. He's already made for you everything you will need.
Now let's look at it and let's start understanding what it means to be created. We have been created. We are being created. It means that God is bringing us about. Everything there is around us, God is bringing us into this atmosphere to affect this atmosphere. There's one or two ways that you can be in this world. You could either be a thermostat or you can be a thermometer. You could either just sit here in this world and just exist and you see everything happening around you and be a thermometer. You could gauge the temperature. You could look at other people live and have success and become everything that they've been created to be. And you could just sit there and watch that. But I choose to be a thermostat. I choose to bring to pass those things that God had named me to be. And because he had named me to be this, I will do what he has created me to do. You will create it for his glory. You will create it for his purpose. You will create it for his will for your life. And then God has great things that he wants to do for you. And he will do some things so wonderful in your life if you would let him bring it to pass. It means that God is bringing bringing something in you to existence. He's pulling out of you. Come on, touch yourself and say, it's in me. It's in me to be who I've been created to be. I tell my kids and I tell everyone that I'm related to about how to be important enough to know that you have been blessed. You have been blessed to know that there is no one on this planet greater than you but God. So when I think about it and I talk to my kids about being everything that God created them to be, I tell them in words like this, there is no one on this planet greater than you but God. And the reason for that is, is that God created all of us to be uh, an innovator. God always created us to become creators and then we to make things come to existence uh, into fruition because of the things that he has always shown us to be, there are some things that you just innate, just, just you know, just uh, know to do, and you don't have to go to school for. Those are some of the things that God has created you to do. Every person that's put on this planet is put here to solve problems because God has put you here to create a solution for every ailment that problems society and then human existence. God has doctors because of need for medication and, and to know how to minister to the body. God has put preachers here because somebody needs to hear the gospel. God has put uh, grocery stores here because, you know, we need food. And this is the way we domestic uh, people. We are domestic people, and we don't have to go out and hunt anymore. It's already been said before us. Now, Let's look at how it means that when we come into existence, when God brings us into existence, then he has to do something else to us. He has to form us. Now, the Bible talks about in the book of Genesis how when God made man, he formed him out of the dust, which means that he made him become visible. He shaped him. He, con um, he configured all of the things that man would need in order to exist here on this planet. And it came in the form of a body. But the body was no good until it had a housing um, uh, indwelling. He had to have the Spirit of God to come inside of him, and he became a living soul. It's, it's easy to exist in this world, but unless you have been illuminated by the presence of God to know who you are in God, you will just only exist. But the best living, the best living is to know who God has created you to be. And as you know who God has created you to be, you become everything there is that God will have you to be, and you can do what God says you can do, and you can be what God says you can be. And I thank him for that. I love him for that. And so I just want you to know that it's very important. It's very important, I said. It's very important to know that God has called you 
by name. Now, here's the next thing is, is that God, when he brings you into existence and then he gives you definition by shaping you and converging you, then he then redeems you. That means that he builds you with everything inside of you to save you, to vindicate you, to um, to give you, uh, to compensate for all of the things that will go bad with you. That's what re- redemption means. It means that he then takes and he he builds you with storms in mind. He builds you with failures in mind. He builds you with all of these things and he takes care of this. So he has redeemed us and he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, one scripture says. And the curse of the law is, is that every soul that sinned, it shall die. But here's what takes place. Then God comes in and then he builds us with this, with knowing that all these faults are in place. But here is the good thing about it is, is that he compensates for that and he gives us uh, salvation. The aspects of salvation is sanctification, justification, and glorification. He sets us apart. He calls us unto himself. He, he makes us a vessel of honor. And then he separates us, which is what he does through sanctification. He calls us out. He says, be ye separated, says the Lord. And then he goes on and he then makes us understand that we have been justified by him. All them that he calls, he justifies. It didn't say qualifies. He always justifies us. If there's a qualification for salvation, that means you could work for it. But you can't work for salvation. You can only work for the salvaging of your soul, the intellect, the emotion, and the will. You have to work hard to stay on the right side of of God, you know, because the enemy is trying to do things with your mind. But that's different from where you are right now, that all of the things, all of the things that you have in God to do, you can do them by understanding that he has just, made you sin free. And now when I think about this, I think about it and I'm sanctified, I'm separated, I'm justified. And then now he then does something wonderful. He then takes and clean you up to the point to where that you have been brought into him. Now, what does this have to do with my name? He says that you've been summoned. You've been summoned. And the definition of summons means that you've been sent for by name. God is sending the Spirit of God out in the earth seeking for you. And he said, the day you hear my voice, he's calling your name. Sometimes he has to scream out because we're so far away from him. But once we get close to him, he could whisper our name. I know when my kids, my grandkids come over and they're in the back room, they're doing stuff, and and I have to tell them to settle down. Either I shout it out, I say, hey, y'all, settle down back there. Or I call them in close to me. And when they get in the room, I I don't have to scream or shout. But when I get close to them, I can tell them, say, I can give them instruction. I call them by name, and they come to me. This is what God is doing. He's calling you by name. Mm, My definition of, my name is my definition, and my definition is my title. This is who I am in God. I am what God has called me to be. God calls me by name. It's, it's a word that sets me apart. It's a, it's a name that sets me apart from everything else. The world cannot, cannot know me. There might be millions of other Leonards, but when I know God for myself, it's the same thing as Lazarus was laying in the tomb. When Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb, why didn't all the other millions of Lazarus get up? Get up? It was only because God and Lazarus had a relationship. And when he called Lazarus by name, Lazarus knew who his 
friend was. He knew the voice of the Savior. You know, it's personal. Amen. It's personal. He knows you. He knows your uprising. He knows your downfalls. He knows everything there is about you because he made you. You know, I'm known for preaching, but I'm not known for, for basketball. You know, uh, the person that is known by basketball is Michael Jordan. We still buy tennis shoes, and Michael Jordan has been retired for years. You know why? Because he's known by that, which he was put on this earth to do, and that he mastered. And he, he, got, he got control of, and he lived it. A lot of people don't know it. Michael Jordan didn't start out being Michael Jordan, the basketball player. Michael Jordan got cut from the basketball team in high school. But then God blessed him. He worked hard at it, and he had, he had something on the inside of him that drove him to do everything that he was created to do. And he got up and he started doing it. He practiced hard at it. Became competitive enough to, to not quit. How many know that when God places his name on you, when he calls you his children, he places his name on you. Now look at the next thing that he says. You know, when he says, when, when you pass through all of these elements, he says, you will not be overwhelmed by it. You will not be consumed by it. You will not be taken away from it, uh, you know, by it. And, and so there is, a, um, there is an accounting term that is used uh, in a legal term. Uh, it's called pass-through. That's the name of a, a firm and a program that is being used for taxes, that that it's it's a it's a form of a accounting that allows you not to be taxed twice for something. That means that if you get a hundred thousand dollars and and then you you know you you declare it you know for a certain thing, you can't be taxed again in that same law uh, that says that you could be taxed two and three times. You can't be taxed two and three times for it. It's called a pass through. You can look that up. Look that up in the accounting term. And that means that God is saying the same thing in the spirit because you, he knows your name. He's already accounted for every, every downfall you have, everything that you went through when you confess it and you come before God, he knows your name and he will not let you have to go through this twice. It's the same thing. An example is Jesus died once and for all. Every, we don't have to do sacrifices with bulls and goats and all of that stuff anymore. You know why? Because Jesus settled it once and for all. His name was Emmanuel. His name was God with us. His name means I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. He said, I am the bread of life. He told the disciples at one time, he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't be a part of me. He became the, the sacrifice, the, the drink offering. He became the bread he, uh, t on the table of showbread, the table of showbread in the temple. He became all of that. And so you cannot allow yourself to stay in your past when God has written you a beautiful future. God has a plan for your life, and he's ready to call you by name. Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born, before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. He called him by name. Jeremiah, I called you by name. I brought you forth. And before your mother knew you, I knew you. Before you were put on this planet, I knew you. So don't say who you are not. Say who you are. You are everything that God created you to be. He said, I have plans for you. And he said, I expect that by a certain time that you will prosper and you will be all of these things that I've created you to be. 
God is not expect you not you shouldn't be expecting God with your hand out. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about expectation, pregnant with destiny, pregnant with power, pregnant with your name is full of destiny. Your name is full of power. Your name is full of strength. Your name is full of everything. You know, one thing that I started doing when I was young, I started trying to see what my name meant. Leo Leonard. Leonard means strength. Leonard means strength. I asked my grandfather, why did he name me that? Why did he name me Leonard? First of all, he had an uncle, a great uncle, that was a preacher named Leonard. And his best friend name was Leonard Jean. So he named me Leonard Jean after his uncle and his best friend. And now I have this, this call on my life based upon somebody that was in another person's life that now God has called me into that now gives me strength to do what I do. I love doing this. I was born to do this. And he calls me by name. But, you know, one of the things that I know most of all is this, is that most people, they say that they know God. But I heard what he said in the scripture. It says that, you know, many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord. He said, but not everyone who says that is going to, uh, you know, be able to go to the to to with him. He says, because I never knew you. Uh, you know, they explain what they did in his name. Lord, I did this in your name. Lord, I did that in your name. And I did all these things in your name. And he doesn't deny that. And what they did was good. What they did was grand. But did he know them? No, he didn't. See, you could be so busy doing work in the church, but if you don't know the Lord of the work, it becomes dangerous. Man, I wouldn't want to go to hell through the church when I have opportunity to know the God of the church. See, church is not... Church is not, I want to say it like this, and I, and I have to be careful when I say it because I don't want you to get offended by what I'm saying. You know, church is not all up to what we make it up to be. You know, we make it up to be country clubs and, you know, meeting places and stuff like that. When we have denied the relationship that we have with God, it has become religion, and we need a relationship with God. We don't need religion. We need a relationship with God so that he will know our name. My name guarantees me. See, see the thing about, let me, let me give you another example about, <clears throat> about God building into something. It's like a check. You send a check through one time, you, cannot, you, you can't send my check through twice. Once it's been taken care of, once it's been redeemed, once it's been, you know, uh, give, brought into, you cannot take and then send my check again through again. Jesus cannot be killed again. You can't, you know, in, 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 in many of the old um, forms of checks, uh, you know, I go to the antique shops a lot, and I asked one time, I had a, I saw a bunch of old checks that was back in the 1800s and, uh, you know, in the early 1900s. They used to take, and it looked like nail holes that was put in those checks. That means that, that you, this check is now canceled. It has been redeemed. It has been paid for. And that's what Jesus did on the cross when he put the nails in his hands. When they put the nails in his feet, you can't go back and kill him a second time. Amen. Glory to God. Ooh, I just felt that. <laughs> in verse 4, it guarantees me the love of God. Now, what are you saying? Let's go back up and I'll read the scriptures all over again. And then you put it all together. It says this, Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2 in the NIV. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, 
He who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. The Lord said he has redeemed us, and I have summoned you. I called you out. I brought you forth by name. He saw me out there in sin. He said, Leonard, come out. I came out. He saw me in my life having ups and downs. He says, get up, Leonard. He saw me when I was passing through the waters. See, the world is, everything that's on the earth is formed through the seas. The, the base of the earth is formed through the waters. So God lifted me up. Whenever the flood would come in, he would raise up a standard against it. And he says in verse 2, he said, but when you pass through the water, he says, I will be with you. How many know God is with you? Because he knows you, he's with you. Man, I wish I had time. But when you pass through the river, I will not let it overwhelm you or sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, I will not let it burn you. The flames will not set you ablaze. So just say this with me. No matter what I go through, I'm coming out of this. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of this because he knows my name. And Job said it best. He said the, he knows the way I take. And he says, but when he has tried me, I will come forth as pure gold. When God gets through, he's going to bring you out with a better name than you went in with. So we love you. God bless you. My time is up. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment we get to have with each other. I pray, Lord, that this word would remind people that you know their names and you will not let anything happen to them because of the name. And we bear your name. We are your children. We are your sons and daughters. And we thank you that you have called us by name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next week, God bless you. Here's your ways that you can be a blessing to this ministry.